Now, what I'm saying is just old, people call this old time preaching. You call it whatever you want. <laughs> I'm calling the truth. Flee fornication. I said it. I said it. Flee fornication. I said it again. Flee fornication. Fornication is where we get our word pornography. And from pornography come all kinds of things. Adultery. Self-pleasure. That so many promote. All you're doing is messing up your mind. You got to know things. Most of this happened in the mind. The body is just something to react. Right here. That's why the Bible says if a man look at that old woman, look at the word look at there means E-T-H. Meaning he look at her. I don't think he's saying don't say that. That's a pretty person. That's an ugly person. No, I don't want to say ugly, but that's a person not as pretty. That ain't, that ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. But when you look at, like, keep looking. Keep looking. To you now, comfortable undressing that person and all the rest of that. How's that different from self-pleasure? Now, I ain't saying the thought coming to your mind is a sin. We live in an evil world. Bird may bring a seed into your garden, rich and fertile, and he may drop a seed from, from, from some that you don't want in your garden. You haven't sinned because the seed hit the dirt. You sin when you bury the seed, wanting it to grow. Ah, oh. ah, oh, most high. Again, bird picks up a seed, says marijuana seed. I don't know where he got it from. He bring and fly it over into your ground. Your ground is fenced. The farmer got you, got rich soil and all of that. The bird drops that seed in your ground. You have not sinned because the seed hit your ground. You sin when you take and make room for the seed, bury it because you want it to grow. He that looketh at the woman. You're going to build on this thing. The other option you have, other the option you have and should take, uh, don't cover the seed. What you should do then is take the seed, throw it back, cast it away from you. How do you do that? What I told you earlier. Now you pray, S P A. You pray, and you also apply because you got rid of it. And if he keep trying to bring it, pray for that sister or brother. Pray good thoughts for him. All right. I've said that. He must want me to say that today. I've seen like I've said it a number of times. All right, guys. I, I, I've i been on here a while. Uh, I'm just trying to help you. And I, um, I love the Most High and I love his people. That's a pure love. You know, a lot of people use love. And <laughs> when some people say, I love you, you got to understand where they're coming from. If their love is tainted huh. I lived a long time I've heard stories that would just break your heart there's a pure love even like a dad and a daughter right pure of the most high but there are women that live today, whether it's a dad, uncle, or whatever. Somebody said they loved them and it wasn't pure. And it's led to incest and different things. How do you expect that woman to go get married and she say, I love you? What does that mean when she say, I love you? Because the love she's experienced of a father type or uncle, dad, doing something he shouldn't have done. How, is, how can she be effective? So... Love means different things to different people. Some love is not pure. That's why some people can't handle the word love. If you say you love them and you, and you genuinely are talking straight up real love, their experience with that means you want something from me. I've seen it. Yeah, you can hear it, but I've seen it. I'm going to set ministering to a person, right? And I say set in ministering, we were actually on the phone. And as they talked, this was years ago, years ago. All the most I was showing me is a little girl sitting there with her hand in her face, in a little dress, sitting in a chair, looking so miserable. And I kept seeing it and seeing it. And he said to me, incest. So finally, I just came out and said, whatever. 
And the person's like, yes. How can a dad do that? Where do you have to be in your head, in your spirit? If you're not saved, it's dark. But I'm saying even people that are not saved, some of them don't even go. How do you get there? Well, I can't say that. That's happened now, gone. But what about her? I got to now do something through the spirit as he leads me to get that person up from that fallen state and have them understand that your experience is not you. The purpose most high created you for is good. If I take a sweet pineapple, and I probably said this before, if you heard it, just bear with it again. A sweet pineapple and take the seeds from it and let, let one person take the seeds to Lincoln, Nebraska. Then another person fly over to Maui, Hawaii and plant that seed, good seed from the same pineapple. Which one is going to be more conducive for growth? The one in Nebraska or the one in Maui, Hawaii? The one in Maui, Hawaii. Why? The environment is conducive for growth. Good seed in Nebraska, but the environment is not good. You got to get the word of the most high to come and change your environment. You may be the only person in your home that's saved. And I know it may be hard, but the word creates an, uh, the ambience. The decor is set by the word. And if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Yeah. Daniel, lion's dying, da, dying, Daniel in the lion's den, peace. Why? Because the most high was with him in part. It's called, I call it, I'm going to call it today, freedom in bondage. The most high don't promise you that he won't send you into a situation where it's binding, where it's hard. What he promises is that he'll get with you in the bondage. He'll, freedom in trouble. Three Hebrew boys in the fire. He didn't take them out. Came in there with them. So somebody's action towards you years ago. Don't let it bind you today. I have one daughter. But the spirit of a father type is just on me. I don't know why he's done that. My heart aches because of the spirit that is violated and stomped on. So many hearts. I have a heart for the brothers as well. Trust me, I do. I grew up without a dad, so my heart is there as well. But that tie, that chain, be broken. And any of you, you all's lives that are listening to me, and any person that reviewed this later, your self worth is not tied to your past environment. Walk into freedom without hate. Walk into freedom. And make a difference for the generations coming after you. Let your wound, bloody, infested, whatever. Let your wound be healed by the word so you could hold up your scar and show another young lady, I made it. You don't give up because you got resistance. I got something that I shared with some people. A speech I did about six years ago now as a mentor for local sports teams, high school and middle school, middle school basketball, high school volleyball, football, and basketball. But this was at a football game that these guys lost that they thought they should have won. And they asked me to speak to the football team and the coaching staff and some other mentors that were there. And you have to do this real quick. And I did. But really, I didn't. It's the Holy Spirit. And he gave me this simple thing. 
of what a football team used to do after they would get out of the huddle. I forget what team it was, but when they finished getting out of the huddle, they would clap. Then they'll go down to the line of scrimmage and get ready for the play. C-L-A-P. If you're going to move forward and go forward, no matter what's happened to you, you don't have to necessarily call it C-L-A-P, but the truth behind what I'm going to really say, I hope you can adopt. C, you got to consider the opposition. Don't be ignorant. You know when you're losing. You know when you don't have the advantage. You know when you keep tripping over the same thing. Acknowledge that. Acknowledge it and say, look, I'm falling. Every time I get to this place, I fall. C, you got to consider that. Then L in clap. Learn from it. You acknowledge that it happens. Now ask yourself, why is it happening? Why do I fall every time in the same way? Learn from the opposition. Learn from the experience. Life is a classroom. And the most high use certain things as instructors, but sometimes people don't learn. So consider what happened, acknowledge it, learn from what happened. It's this in me. Pride, it's this in me. Lust, it's this in me. Most high took somebody away from me that I love and I hate him. Now that's a strong word. I don't even like for it coming out of my mouth. But this is the reality. Some people hate the most high. Let that experience that you've considered learn from that and acknowledge it that this is why I keep falling. Learn. What is it? Why did I choose my family over, over my, you know, my husband, he used to beat me, beat me up and all of that, but my kids were there. I took them and now you're raising your kids by yourself and all this. Make sure they don't become an idol. Learn. What, what causes me to, why do I fall? Why did I let him lie to me? Because I don't want them to feel toward me as they feel toward their dad. So I let my son lie to me or my daughter. Learn. C-L. A. Adapt. And adjust. Both of them begins with A. You got to adjust. If they lost the game because the defense was weak, you got to make an adjustment. You got to come up with some plays or put different people in positions. If the rushing, if the, if the running back is just gaining yards, you, we got to do something on defense. So you consider it, identify what it is, you learn from it, you sit and let the situation teach you, like a videotape. When the opposite, when the team that lost, when a team get ready to play a team, you know, they may get the tape, you got to watch what these guys do. See what their strengths are, see what their, 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 their uh, weaknesses are. Strengths and weaknesses. Your strengths will provide an opportunity. Your weaknesses will provide threat. Weakness on the team is a threat to, the, to them winning. Strengths on the team is an opportunity for them to win. C, consider it. L, learn from it. Now, adjust. This is the application part. My mouth gets me in trouble. I talk too much. I'm not talking about me. I'm just saying, say this is what you've learned. I talk too much. You got to get scriptures to apply to that. I gave one earlier. Slow to speak, quick to hear, slow to anger. Proverbs got a lot in there. It's like a woman that's continuing nagging, man. It's like, I think one scripture says, it's like water dropping on the roof, making that noise. Because a lady that just continues to talk. You got to learn. Do you have to talk, sister? Can you sit and think for a while before you open your mouth? If you're a brother, you you know it, man. Don't even watch that show. That show gonna send you off in the left field. You know there's some scenes in there that's gonna kick up that lust. You gotta learn. You keep falling because you keep watching that movie. You don't need nobody to lay hands on you. You don't need another church service. You don't need those. You don't need to shout. You need to sit, consider why you're falling, learn from it, and make an adjustment. 
Sometimes that adjustment means you can't be around certain people. Some people try to hold on to friends. And what happened, normally what happened, most of how I set up situations to see if you love them more than them. That's what he did with Adam and Eve. Adam chose Eve. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to be tested. So you got to prepare yourself. Who do you love more? This person or Yasha? This person or Jesus, as most people know him. But you got to make an adjustment. It might be less TV, more prayer. CLA. Last one, I think, because I shared it with some people, and I, I know the truth of what I taught, but I haven't listened to it. Like, just said I'd listen to it, but I believe the last part of it is you got to be, you got to persevere. You don't stop. You take that knowledge that you've learned, you're playing for an adjustment, and you move forward. That's true application. More than likely, you're not going to experience the defeat you experienced before. And it definitely shouldn't be by the mount, the margin of error that was there. That you lost the first time 44-0. I mean, hey, at least the next game, it needs to be something like 28 to 24 or something like that. But I believe you win. But I'm just saying, life is about making adjustments and going forward. You may have failed, but I kind of call it a delightful failure. <laughs> I missed it, but the joy of learning the Most High's word and getting in his arm and putting my arms around his neck and him embracing me brings me delight. So even though I failed in this area, it's created an environment of closeness between me and my father. Now, I, I recently talked about delightful failure, but not in that way. For those of you, you all that I teach, that's another way of looking at delight for failure. Let your failures lead you to delight. Oh, man, I hope you heard that. Don't let your failures lead you to a two weeks of beating yourself up. Nobody can get anything good out of you for a whole month. That's why the devil does it. He's like, go, go just go over there and mess up, mess up something in her life. She ain't, she, it's going to take her two months to recover. So she won't be useful to a hire for two months. No, let that failure become a delight. What do I mean? I failed. Now I'm getting up, going to daddy. I'm going to my father, getting his arms. Daddy, I'm sorry. Here's what I know your word says. And it's such a delight for me to understand this and embrace him. I call that a delightful failure as well. Hope that made sense. All right. I've been on here a while. I don't want to be on here two hours. I, um, um, but um, thank you all for taking the time to listen to this old warrior. I refer to myself as an old warrior. A lot of people wouldn't do that. I'm not, by age, I'm not in my 60s or 70s, right? But to me, being elderly or being older is a plus. I know in the church today, a lot of people are trying to fight it, you know? <laughs> they see a gray hair, man. They're like, oh, you know, it's a fly in the house. Or it's something, you know, they die. Yeah, die your hair if you want. Shit, that's your, that's your prerogative. But me, I, I'm grateful to get to this point in my life. And even though I'm not an old guy, I was raised by somebody during the Great Depression. They lived in the Great Depression. They raised me. My grandmother raised me. So I think like a person that's 80 and 70, even though I'm in my 50s. That's an advantage for me. I learned how people thought in the 30s and 40s. Then I grew up during the 60s. My mom grew up during the 40s and 50s. I've learned from this. That's why I don't, I'm not going to go with all this stuff. I ain't got time for that. Some decisions you can see it ahead of time. may feel good for 15, 10, 20 minutes. It's going to cost you two or three years of wounds. <laughs> no, she have learned. Nah, let that go on by. Some people, they don't learn. They're right there in it again. Right there in it again. Going before Haya again and again. When all they have to do is spa. Study. Where you made a mistake at? Find scriptures on it. Study it. Pray it. And then apply it. Thank you for listening to me today. You are welcome, my sister. Thank you, Shep. Awesome and clear teaching. Thank you for your comment. Probably even more so than awesome. That word clear means a whole lot to Shep. You understood it. May you walk in wisdom. Purity and wisdom. Saw purity on you the other day, what he's called you to. But now, he's adding wisdom to that.
Give her wisdom. Insight. Discernment. Discernment. Pray for all of you all, but when I saw that comment, love you. Yeah, that's right. Lift your hand. So be it. So be it means I agree. Most people say amen. I choose to say so be it. I like, I like to get the core of a word. Purity and wisdom. Love you. Get ready to smile. You may smile already, but there's a delightful journey up ahead for you. You and the Most High. A lot of people don't like being by themselves, lovey. Get ready to enjoy the walk with the Most High. I see you smiling. And people wonder where in the world is the joy coming from. I mean, she ain't got this, she ain't got this, whatever. Ah, uh, no, they don't understand. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I feel no evil for thou with me. That's going to be your smile. He's with me. Purity and wisdom. It's yours. All you got to do is grasp it. It's yours. How you grasp it? Spa. Wonderful. Yes, sir, I receive it. Hmm. Well, receive it. It comes from your father. I mean, I'm a father type, yes, but I'm saying I ain't talking about father type like old warrior or elder. I'm talking about your father whom you have DNA after. Don't get me wrong. It's an honor for me to be a father type in your life. But what I'm speaking is on his behalf. So he's putting a natural voice here to say to you what you need to hear. I don't know your relationship with your natural father and none of that. that, that that's not even important at this juncture but he touched this man to say to you get ready to walk in purity and wisdom and enjoy it i got a prayer that i give and i'm not gonna say the whole prayer but the first part of the prayer and uh, i don't know if i've said that to you um love you let me know if you haven't gotten this prayer but it's a prayer i pray to thou worthy, most high, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. I praise you for your holy essence, presence, and character. I speak well of you. I was created to worship you and to enjoy you forever. That part right there. I want you to get off the bus there and sit on that bench and enjoy it. I was created to worship you and enjoy you forever. That's your season, lovey. To worship him and enjoy him forever. I don't care what other voice come. Hear your father talking to you through this father type. Call you to a season to worship and enjoy him forever. And may your past pain be viewed through different lenses. The lens by which you will look at your past now is supposed to be different. You're not going to see it the same way. He don't want you to see it the same way. Some things that you, you thought was rejection is really his protection. When you put on the right lenses, instead of seeing rejection, you're going to see it as, oh my, he was protecting me. Actually, that's for a lot of y'all. I'm going to say that again. You need changing lenses. Your past hurt, disappointments. As you study, put on the word and pray, you're going to see your rejection as protection from your father. Now, he's saying that to you through my voice. He loves you. He loves all of you. And may he increase the measure of your ability to see it. 
He ain't going to increase his love because he's the most high. Love to him is love. Our ability to perceive the love is what can really change. If you got a window that's only so big, like right there, if you, if you couldn't see anything else on the outside of my hands and only could see this part, you'd see my two eyes and my nose. But there's so much more of me to be seen. But if you expand it, huh? that's what he's doing to some of y'all. Yeah. You're going to expand it. Now you're going to see more of that love. Now I pray that makes sense. Hmm. Nothing like his love. Yeah, he's going to expand your, your lens is going to change. Actually, you're doing it now. You have to, I don't know what to call the doctors, the eye doctors. I'm just going to call them eye doctor. You got an eye doctor's appointment. That's what you got. It's called worship experience. Some of y'all getting it right now. <laughs> getting it in the morning, getting it at night. He, he's, he's changing your prescriptions. Whew, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. And if I don't watch it, I'll begin to speak in a heavenly language. And uh, I don't want to do that right now because that's that'll be for me. But I feel it. <laughs> Oh, I feel like expressing myself in that heavenly language, but that I can control that. He's changing your lens. Erica, Sasha, Justine, all of you, Shonda. It's time for upgrading your prescription. And there you are, sitting in the eye doctor's clinic, waiting on him to call you back, tell you to upgrade. Yeah, when you come out, you're going to see clearer. Ah. ah, boy, I tell you. Woo, I saw you dancing. I started to say it, Erica. When I started talking there earlier, I saw you dancing, just Joy, dancing like a little girl. You got a right to dance. <laughs> Look at what he's done for you. Take your mind back two years from the date. I'm talking to Erica. Go, just go two years from now. Just, just look at where your mind was and look at you now. You don't, you don't have some appointments with the eye doctor. He's been working on your prescription, upgrading it, upgrading it, upgrading it. Uh-huh. Goody. Oh, I was reading the person's comment and I was saying what I saw them say. But you should rejoice because you are being changed into his image from glory to glory. <laughs> oh, he loves his people. I'm just a funnel here. He, 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 he's pouring out your inheritance. But because I know some of you all and you're his children and I care for you, I can't help but get excited because to see you get blessed helps me. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, I don't care how dark it gets. And I believe we hit it from the dark times. I want you to realize that no matter where you go, I apologize for that. No matter where you go, if he's with you, you are in a no-lose situation. I didn't say a comfortable situation. I didn't say the environment of the situation would look nice. But as I was expressing this to one of the most highest precious hearts today. Joy. Some days you feel like you save and just, uh, and then there's going to be some days the enemy going to try to wait, the outside is going to weigh down and you may not feel, feel, feel. But I want to say to you, most high don't deal, feelings are in your, 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 your heart, your mind part, along with your rationale and your power of choice. Joy is in your spirit. So no matter how you feel, joy is always there. Acknowledge it. 
How do you acknowledge it? By thinking on him. You think on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. <laughs> uh. War is coming against you. The enemy is trying to attack you. Go to Psalms 27. Some of y'all read that tonight if you get a chance. Especially the first 10 verses. Go to Psalms 27. I encourage you to read it in the Amplified or the AMPC as well. King James is how I learned it. But to dig out the meaning, I encourage you to read it in the Amplified or the Amplified Bible Classic. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? For the word Lord there, I exchanged that with the Most High. Because the word Lord for the Greeks and the Romans meant their God. And with Baal, the word Lord means, Baal also meant Lord. For those of you that are in the learning institute, for lack of a better word, that the Most High has me teaching in right now, you probably heard this. The word Baal means Lord. David wasn't talking about Baal there. That's why I choose to use the Most High. So Roman gods, they referred to them as Lord a lot. Babylonians, same way. Egyptians with Ra. Greeks and Romans with Jupiter and um, Zeus. Anyway, I can get into that. The Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, whom shall I be afraid? The most high is the strength of my life. The most high. When my enemy and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh, what happened? They stumbled and fell. Why are they falling? David's one man. Why are all this host of people stumbling and falling? Because he's with the most high. Though an host shall encamp against me. In this one thing will I have confidence. What is it? Howlet, sir? Abram tank? Scud missile? What is David talking about? One thing, I have confidence. 100,000 troops? A cabinet of generals that I could go and get advice from? No. One thing, I desire of the Lord, that most high, and that will I seek after. That I may dwell <laughs> in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, for David, he had to go to a house. Because that's where the temple was, and that's where the Ark of the Covenant, with the little token inside, with two uh, uh, cherubim stretched over it, and, uh, and, and, and the, the, the mercy seat there. The place where they would come and put the blood, so he won't look at Israel in their sin like that. That was in a house. But now you, you're the temple. And the presence of the Most High is not under a cherubim on top of a mercy seat, it's in your heart. So David is saying, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord, or the Most High. You were saying, I want to go into the upper room, the secret place, and have fellowship with the Spirit. Because my Spirit is in me, and the Holy Spirit is in me. Fellowship, worship. So you desire that. One thing I desire of the Most High, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, that I may behold his beauty. I don't want to look at my situation. I don't want to look at my circumstance. I don't want to look at what's going on on my job. I don't want to look at this family difficulty. I want to get in his presence and Look at him. Ah, oh, isn't he decked in majesty? Habakkuk says that his glory is like, the bright, his brightness is as the light. Light there is like lightning. How lightning flashing is bright. His brightness as the light. And rays of glory comes from his hands. That's how awesome your most high is. You want to behold his beauty. And then you want to inquire in his temple. Now, one of you all listening to me understand this word inquire. All of you are inquisitive, but there's a person on here watching today. If they're still watching, they understand. You inquire. That's a good thing. Question after question after question. Don't let nobody tell you. You ask too many questions. You ask too many questions. Ah, oh, no. You got a father. You was in darkness for all those years. Now you're sitting on the, the lap of the one of light. Ask away. Worship him in between the questions. David didn't stop. He kept going. Thinking about the Most High. Therein is your spiritual success. The Most High loves each of you. I'm going to get ready to stop here. I apologize in the sense that 
Well, I didn't put a title out on this. I just simply said, the word with Shep is live or something like that. Well, they put that up. So I didn't say John, 3, John 1 verse 14 is what we definitely going to be doing. That was my intention. But he knows what your heart needs. So I don't apologize. Yes, keep asking questions, whoever that person was. Absolutely. The system don't want you to ask questions. They, they, they fear questions. But if people ask questions, it could get some of this mess dealt with. Why is that picture on the wall? Why is that picture on the wall? Does he look like that? Why do we do Easter? Why do we do Christmas? Why do we... Yeah. Questions are... It's how you progressively ponder and how you continuously contemplate. And those that I teach, I teach them to ask questions of the text. Ask questions of it. You want to. Well, you should. When you read, ask questions. Sometimes I will ask questions and ask people to ask, answer those questions to get you to learn how to ask questions. You, if you don't ask questions, I, I don't see how you're going to learn. Hmm. No, you ask questions. You got to write, first of all, Two answers. How's somebody going to die on a cross for you to be free and come into your inheritance, leave you in the earth to live a life to represent him, and you not ask questions? <laughs> the Most High is not intimidated by your questions. He wants to answer them. That's why he gave the gifts. That's why I'm here as a pastor and a teacher, an old warrior, an elder, father type, whatever name people want to call it. Again, I don't get into that capital F father thing. Your father is the most high. I'm just a father type. So he could use someone in the natural to provide fatherly care and all of that. But he's your father. You don't call no man in the earth father. Like the father. No way. Function over title. Function over title. Forget the title. Function. All right. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being here. The Most High loves you. As his servant called to care for his people, I love you. And I thank you, Most High, for bringing you my way. And for those of you that we're reading some of the correspondence today. You understand that part where I said I love you. Um, it's an honor to serve the Most Highest people. And I'm so grateful for him. I'm so grateful for my wife that he's given me, that's been by my side for 38 years. I'm grateful for her encouragement. I'm grateful for her help. And I thank you all for those of you that did, you know, send prayers or whatever. I, um, I really greatly appreciate it, praying for my family. Um, I know I can't do this by myself. And then even when I go out to do YouTube and other social media, the family he's given me, extended family, community, I'm so grateful for your prayers. They make a difference. Don't let nobody tell you. I, the, I think one of the greatest things to come into knowledge of as a leader is that the thing you need most from the saints it's not money. It's prayer. So if you appreciate what the Most High is doing through me, pray for me. Spirit, soul, and body. That's your composition. Pray for me physically. Some of you all know a little bit what I deal with physically. Pray for me mentally, intellect, emotions, will. And pray for me spiritually. You do that for Shep. You have tremendously blessed, blessed Shep. And until that day come where we all sit together. At which has to be such a humongous table. But at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Where Christ sits down with his bride. Oh there she is. Brenda Baker. I love you sweetheart. I love you too. Now, her love extends a little bit more than just 
agape because that's my partner. That's my the one that he's given me. There's no other woman that I would love like I love her. None. For 38 years, they, 38 years there hadn't been one, and there will be none. So thank you. I love you too, uh, Brenda. Uh, my sisters and brothers, it's been an honor, and I look forward to that gathering, marriage of the Lamb. Some of us cannot touch each other. Those of you that I teach and that I pr pray for, for protection and all of this, I'm able to do that virtually through phone calls and things like that. But one day, <laughs> I'm going to actually be able to embrace you in the fullness of the Spirit with new bodies. And we'll never, ever have to part again. We won't have to worry about one being in New York, one being in England, one being here. We'll all be together, family. I look forward to that day. What a beautiful day. But until then, we got to fight. We got to stand. We got to do warfare. But always understand and never forget. Be strong. And know. You are not alone. I salute you. Shalom.